Hey guys, have you ever wondered how you can visualize your models that you define in Keras, either using sequential method or the functional API? Once you define the model, how to visualize the model? Well, if so, this video is for you. And in fact, I'm talking about exactly what you're seeing on the screen. Yeah, whether your model is a simple model or a complex model, once you define it, how do you plot it? Okay, so first of all, there are a couple of prerequisites that you need to install. Uh, and we are going to use a library called plot underscore model that's actually available as part of your tensorflow.keras anyway. So nothing special there. You probably already have it if you have installed TensorFlow. But what you do not have are a couple of dependencies of uh, the plot model library. Those are PyDot and GraphWiz libraries. So uh, it's not as simple as just pip install PyDot. Well, PyDot, it's pip install PyDot. That's fine, that works. But uh, more importantly, you need this GraphWiz library. So no tricks here. Basically, all you need to do is go to the GraphWiz uh, library releases page. I'll leave the link down in the description or it's just gitlab.com slash you see the URL right there. So you go to a page where you see a whole bunch of uh, downloads and I downloaded this specific version. I'm on Windows 10. So I looked at uh, x64, 64-bit version, and I looked at the exe format. And that's the latest one. And I'm looking at the release and there is a debug version. I just downloaded the release version and install it. Again, no tricks while installing. The only thing I would recommend is just add it to the system path so you don't have to manually add it. So when you're installing it, just add it uh, to the system path for the current users or for all users, it's up to you. Once you do that, you can check the installation. Just open Windows, uh, uh, you know, uh, command prompt, or I almost said uh, PowerShell because I didn't check it in PowerShell, but technically open Windows command prompt, prompt or PowerShell, it should work there, and enter dot space minus V. It should show you the version number and all that stuff. So if so, it's it's installed. And again, there is no reason to suspect that it is, uh, uh, it is not installed or tricky. If you run into any issues, just leave it in the comment if uh, we'll see if someone can help us out. But this is how you install GraphWiz on your uh, Windows, but you're not done yet. Now open the Anaconda prompt, okay? Or you can do this in the spider, but open the Anaconda prompt so you know what I'm talking about when you hit the start and uh, you'll have Anaconda prompt for your different environments, right? So on this system, I only have two different environments, Pi37 and Pi37 version two. Uh, the reason I have this is once I have a working environment, this is the one where I have Pi 3.7, Python 3.7 with GPU for TensorFlow. I have everything working, I just back it up. So in case something happens, I can always go there, okay? But anyway, that's additional information. Just go to whatever the environment you want this to be installed, open the Anaconda prompt, and just go ahead and pip install PyDot and pip install GraphWiz. Okay, that's it, you're all set. Once you do that, you're all ready to uh, plot it using your plot model. So let me jump to the code to show you uh, how to plot the couple of models that you saw on the welcome screen. Okay, so I'll share this file with you as usual. So with all the text here, again, the link to this uh, releases is also right here in case uh, you haven't found it in the, in the description down below of this video. Okay, so let's go down and define a very simple model using our sequential method, right? And this part, you should probably know this. If not, this tutorial doesn't make any sense to you. So uh, the library we're gonna use is called plot model, like we already mentioned. It's part of your uh, tensorflow.keras.utils, okay? So go ahead and import that line. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, let me increase the size of the font on the right-hand side in case you're interested in seeing what's happening. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and import the sequential method. Again, this is, you probably are familiar with this and we are going to use only the dense model uh, for the simplest model. Yeah, you can try with, uh, you know, you can try your units or, uh, you know, your convolution or convolution plus dense and so on. It's up to you, but I just want to demonstrate this on a simple model here. So for that, I only need dense. So let's go ahead and start our model equals to sequential. To that, I'm going to add a dense layer with uh, 20 right there. So let's go ahead and add a dense and let's add another dense layer. And normally we would print the summary, right? So we would go to model.summary, just go ahead and print it. I like this. 
Uh, I like this. In fact, I do this most of the time. I rarely, well, I should say not as often, I do actually do what I'm showing you today. But sometimes it helps. Wait a second to see where it helps. Right now, this is very useful because I can see how many parameters at each layer and all that stuff. But if you want to plot the model, go ahead and this is what we are going to use, plot model. Which one? Our model to this file. So let's go ahead and plot it and there you go. It's also saved to that file. If I go here, you see the simple model that got just saved, so right there you see exactly the same information right here. So we have our dense input, input layer, and then a dense layer, and then another dense layer. Now let's do a bit more complicated model because that's when it makes real sense. For these linear models, usually this is enough. Just looking at your model.summary is more than enough because the information is flowing in one direction, that's it. It's not complicated. Now complex models, you cannot define it using sequential method. In fact, I'll probably make another video on the topic of uh, uh, how you can define use functional API. Probably you know it, but uh, how to use functional API because you cannot do complex models using just the sequential. What do I mean by that? Okay, coming down here, let's go ahead and uh, first of all clear everything and clear the screen so we can focus. Okay, now I'm going to use exactly the same library, plot model to plot this, and I am importing a few layers. Now I'm importing an input layer, dense, flatten, convolutional 2D, max pooling, and I'm also concatenating. What am I trying to achieve right now? I'm trying to define two inputs because for certain models, uh, you may have multiple inputs. Here, you just had a single input. For most of these, for in fact, all of these models that we define using sequential, you have single input, whether that input is an image, two-dimensional image, or a three-dimensional image, or a multi-dimensional, whatever it is, you have single input. Sometimes you may have two inputs to your model. One, um, I'm thinking about an example. Let uh, Think of, uh, think of uh, uh, generative adversarial networks. For example, if you want to condition your uh, GAN, your generative adversarial network using class label, then your input to the GAN would be two things. One is your actual input, which is your image, uh, or uh, the vector to the generator, if you think about generator. So whatever that vector goes into that, and also the class label that you want to condition this GAN. Again, please stay tuned for three, four, five videos. Uh, uh, later on, uh, maybe if you, uh, I have a few uh, videos in the pipeline, but I'll eventually get to generative adversarial networks. So subscribe to this channel, guys. Uh, anyway, so in those situations, you may have multiple inputs and then you concatenate those, and then you uh, uh, may have multiple outputs, but in GANs, you have a single output, let's say. So that's what the concatenation layer is there uh, for. So let's go ahead and run these lines. I mean, these should be pretty much uh, straightforward. And then here, I'm defining two inputs for this, uh, for this model. One input has a shape of 64 by 64 by one. The other input has a shape of 32 by 32 by three. This is not, uh, a specific model for a specific application. I just put together two input blocks right there. So what am I trying to do here? So for the first input, I'm doing Conv2D, max pooling, Conv2D, max pooling, and then flattening. For the second input, I'm doing exactly the same, and then I'm going to concatenate both of these together, and finally uh, add a hidden layer with a dense layer of 10 uh, nodes, and then another dense layer, which is our output layer, right? using sigmoid. And finally, I'm defining my model as inputs as input one and input two, because in our model, we have two inputs and our output is going to be this output right there. Well, that looks a bit complicated. This is exactly when I really want to visualize my model to get a good feeling for, okay, this is exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and run all of these lines. Well, we yeah, already done that. So you know exactly what we are talking about. So if you come back here, let's uh, expand this side. We'll get to the uh, plot in a second. But if you come back here, I mean, it kind of makes sense if you just look at input one, input two, con 2D, con 2D2, max pooling. But this doesn't visually tell you what's going on. In a way, you can go back to this, you can go back to this, and models can be even more complicated than this. Yeah, so you may have multiple outputs, you may have multiple features, one single input, multiple features, and you're concatenating the features, right? You, the, it can go from one input 
different features and then uh, the different paths and concatenate that. So it, it depending on the application, you have complex applications, uh, complex models, but just by looking at summary, it's not enough. That's exactly why we are printing. So let me open the image rather than look at it here. Yeah, there it is, complex model. So let's make this full screen. So there you can see, we have our input one, input two. Goes through COM2D and these are symmetric. I mean, we designed them to be symmetric, right? So they are going through COM2D max pooling and then we are flattening them. Once they're flattened, we are concatenating and then it goes through a dense layer, another dense layer. This is much more visual. Now I know exactly what's going on, how the data is flowing. This is much better than model.summary. I, uh, I bet you agree with me there. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted to show you basically how you can do this plotting and uh, all and and uh, you probably already know this so you may have tried this and ran into some graph viz issues or something but you know now how to install you know how to install this uh, both pydot and graph viz and it's pretty simple i just wanted to make this video in case you don't know this or in case you have uh, run into issues in the past okay i appreciate your time and uh, hopefully you like the content of these videos if you really like this specific video hit the like button so i know that i should be making more such videos for you guys okay feedback is always important thank you very much